And I guess one of the biggest things I've talked about is just the communication issues on defensively. Is from your perspective, what have been those breakdowns and how have you guys worked to try to, I guess, improve the communication? Well, um, I think uh, some of it, once we got caught thinking we'd be better with the green dot, which is the communication between me and the guy on the field, and we weren't as good as we thought we would be. You know, we were good in practice. We thought it would carry over. It didn't carry over. Um, and then I just think we just had to grow into or, or continue to grow into being a team that communicates. Uh, we really don't have an alpha out there who's really doing that. But we do have guys who are, you know, right now this team is trying to improve and be the best we can be. And so we do have guys that are really buying into If you saw us last game, there are really a lot of guys talking out there. Coach, I'm assuming communication is part of the issue when you had the, the four, two fourth down situations that, that turned into two touchdowns. Can you speak on in those two moments as well as their mindset to overcome that? Yeah, you know, the, the, the one was not a communication issue. Guys are pointing at their guys. It was a, really a discipline issue of guys just not taking their guys. So that was a, that was a tough one. And then they schemed us on the one. They, I mean, they got us. They got us on the one. It was a good call by them. Uh, and uh, they picked us, and they got it. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, are you the, talk, no, no, no. I'm sorry. You're talking about the the which one was the? I was talking about the, the two fourth down plays. Right. Um, that ended up as big, big plays. Yes. Yes. Plus, but then I also wanted your, your thoughts on how they were able to overcome those two difficult. Well, this is the deal, man. You know, and I told him at halftime. Because we had a guy on the bench, and he was talking about <clears> – he was saying some things that I didn't agree with. I think that this defense right now is overcoming being a little bit fragile. And I said to them at halftime, you know, I can come in here and MF everybody, and I've done that before, and I can go crazy. But that's not going to help this defense. But what, I, what we are going to do is we're going to stay positive and we're going to play to the end. We actually practice that this week. We practice being positive, being enthusiastic, celebrating with each other. I think that showed up on Friday night. Like any coach, Jeff can be fiery. Were you surprised that he was so calm under the situation? You touched on this a little bit with you. Uh, the situation that presented itself the other night, I mean – could have gone wild, I guess. Yeah, yeah. My belief is, you know, I, <laughs> I used to be. This is my deal. Whatever's conducive to winning, that's what I try to do. If it requires being one way, I try to do that. If it requires being another way, I try to do that. Uh, and I always say win by one. So when we're in these games, I'm, I'm. I think that sometimes you can, your ego can become involved. Uh, your feelings as a human being and how people perceive you can become involved. And I try never to let that affect me in that way. I try to do what's best for the team in that moment to help the team move forward and in that particular moment to try to win that game. I can't speak to Jeff. I can't speak to how he reacts. He has a passion for this game. He has a passion for this school. And uh, however that comes out is how it comes out. And I want to be the best I can for him. And I tell him that all the time, and I mean that. I want to be the best I can for him. I want to be the best I can for Louisville. And uh, I'm going to continue to work to do that. Uh, Coach, you mentioned doing anything conducive to winning and maybe some of the, as you said, fragileness on the sideline when it comes to the defense. At this point in the year, how hard is it to change mentality? And what are some of the challenges of getting that back to where you want it to be? Right. We, 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 we don't, you know, I, I don't really look at it like that. I try to look at it like I've said all along, hey, guys, you're going to get there. We're going to get there as a defense, right? Uh, our issue has been – you know, making mistakes at multiple levels of the defense. If it was just one guy or one unit, we would be able to put our, you know, kind of put our fingers on those dams, but it's, it's on those holes. But it's not really been that. It's been every level. So I just try to stay positive and continue to work with these guys. But the other thing is we stress from the beginning, hey, look, you just continue to try to get better every day, every week. So I don't even look at it like, 
okay, this is game seven or game six or whatever it happens to be. Because whether we were undefeated or had lost four games, we're still going to try to get better. Uh, Ron, there have been times this season where the defense has struggled to kind of contain the middle of the field and pass coverage. Yeah. Uh, from your perspective as the play caller, like, what do you think is the fundamental issue with not being able, being susceptible to giving up passing yards in the middle of the field? Well, you got to close the middle at times, and then guys got to cover their guys at times. Sometimes we got guys coming off of their guys who are not necessarily executing uh, the call. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it comes down to the coach. I mean, you got to close the middle. You got to help the guys as much as you can. I think we've done some good things. I mean, it hasn't all been throw the ball down the middle of the field, but I think there are times where we have allowed throws down the middle that we would like to have back. Jeff has said multiple times that the calls need to get in quicker, and he's had to. He's asked, I guess, to simplify the defense. Um, what have you guys done to get the calls in quicker? And secondly. Uh, have you been surprised uh, that you've had to simplify the defense? That, that's, those are great questions. Uh, well, just just having a plan. We, you know, we, sometimes the call's in there, but the processing of the call is not as quick as it needs to be. So to me, that's a function of the call itself. So you have to give them calls that they can function, that they can uh, you know, process quickly. Uh, and I think that helps. And the second part was, Oh, yeah. This has happened to us before. So we have a bunch of veteran guys that we thought would have a little higher aptitude than they've had. Uh, and so we have had to be less ambitious in what we are asking them to do. And sometimes that can show up in practice where they can execute all those calls. And But in the heat of battle, is, is something different. And so we had to come to grips with that. And we, as aggressive and innovative as we would like to be, uh, it's not always the right time for that particular unit. What do you see from uh, Clemson and Kate Klubnick out there? And, you know, the light seems to come on for him. And how do you keep your defense m you know, mentally checked in when they're, it's an offense that's going to produce and you just got to keep them mentally in the this game? Is, this is what they do. They, they, that's where you down. They wear you down. They say, we're going to run the ball right here. We're going to run it right there. Uh, they do take their shots. The quarterback can maneuver a little bit, uh, get straight ahead speed. Um, the back's a big guy. You know, he's a 230-pound guy. So they're going to run the ball downhill. That's why I'm saying, man, what, I'm try what, I, what I teach on defense is, hey, man, regardless of the circumstances, play the same. Now, has that taken hold as fast as I would have liked it to this year? No, it has not. But the reality is, is I'm going to preach that until the last snap. I want these guys to play the same regardless of what happens. And that, that really was Saturday. Like, somebody said, did you even know it was 20 to nothing? No, I didn't know it was 20 to nothing. I really didn't care if it was 20 to nothing. So, that's my deal. Is it a process to develop – thick enough skin to, to do this job to where, I mean, every week, you know, there'll be like one play and people are like, oh, you got to fire Ron English right now. Uh, I mean, is that something like through your career that you've kind of hey, developed? Look, I've been, a, I, I, I've been, I've won more wars than you can win. I mean, I'm not saying I won them all, but I've won my share. So I, I just, man, don't think I learned this long ago. I learned it long ago. I learned it from Lloyd Carr. He said, Ron, this is a fishbowl at Michigan. He called me in before the first game, and he said, listen, you can't be cussing on the sideline. You know, because I got a bad mouth. In practice, I'm cussing and all that. I said, listen, I, I'm not going to cuss on the sideline. He was worried because he knew that camera was going to be in my face. And uh, I just believe in on, the, you know, on game day, keeping your poise. That's my deal. Because you ain't winning losing your poise, man. You're not winning. You're losing. So keep your poise. But in any event, he said, listen, this is what's going to happen. You're going to do well, and you're going to be great. And you're not going to do well, and you're going to be bad and awful, and they're going to want you out of here. Now, he said, now, there's a time where it's going to be time for you to go. Because <laughs> here, there's always a time. But 
uh, you will speed up that process if you get caught up in what people's opinions are. So I don't read the articles or go on social media during the season. I go after the season. I go after the season. And then I can read about how I'm supposed to be fired and I'm the worst and stuff and then boo, boo, boo. I was, uh, when we lost to App State, you know, of course I was, well, what's he waiting on? He should have fired them, you know, as soon as the clock hit zeros. And then when we beat Tebow in Florida, then we were three touchdown underdog or whatever, then I'm, I should be the head coach. So it just is what it is. It is what it is, man. That's why I really just try to do my best for the people, man. I try to do my best for the people. Who are the people? The people is this university, the people sitting in those chairs, and Jeff Brown. I want Jeff to have success, man, and I, he will. That's what I'm here for. That's what I care about. Thank you.